cool. Welcome to the Youth Voice, a podcast giving young people a voice in politics across the island of Ireland. So, you've missed me, I hope, because we're getting back into season three. We've been gone for a while. I had exams. We t- got the election coverage in just about. Quite huge changes. The last couple of days have been insane, both in Ireland, in the UK, in Northern Irish politics. So, thought we had to start if we're going to start season three today's as good a day as ever Boris Johnson has just announced his intention to resign and I'm joined here by Dan McMillan Dan is a young Hi. political commentator I guess is yeah. I uh, suppose yeah <laughs> Dan's done very well on TikTok with his thoughts on UK politics bits of US I've seen yeah and I mean I just I've been following Dan for a long time and I thought he'd be a great person to bring on to the podcast so Welcome to the show. Thanks. It's good uh, to be on. So, I suppose, starting at the start, what got you into politics? Um, so, I probably got into politics when I was about 13. Um, it was, the reason I remember that is because it must have been around the time of Grenfell. Like, I remember, like, thinking, I remember it was probably just through Twitter and stuff, through, like, yeah, it would have been through social media, but... I would say like I really got into politics like probably near like near general election 2019 just before it and then probably like seriously into it uh, about a year and a half ago. And I suppose one of the things that both of us can kind of relate to is we've started our own platforms essentially. I yeah. launched the podcast and the blog. You can yeah. take it. was probably more after. official than mine. <laughs> I, yeah but um, yeah yeah. Um, I, so I started that, I started on TikTok about a year and a half ago. It would have been about February 2021. And that was sort of through talking about my opinion on sexual assault stuff, uh, sort of the stuff that was going on at the time with the Sarah Everard case, a horrible case. But um, my thoughts about that and what the government could do to stop things like that happening again or less frequently. But um since then yeah you're right I've spoken about US politics I'm really just giving my opinion not much more than that and I mean today has been massive the last three days so we were were scheduled to do this podcast (laughs) 10 days ago was it yeah and oh my god like it could not have been a worse day to do it today all all of my all of my questions became obsolete yeah so we had a list of questions and I was just looking through them today and I was like none of these are relevant anymore <laughs> like and yeah so it's interesting but it's been a crazy few days and just trying to keep up see what's going on i've been at work constantly checking my phone like has he resigned has he resigned but um, we think he's resigned now i mean i woke up this morning quite angry because i woke up at like 11 and then i saw the yeah. news that he's gonna resign at half 12 oh, and like, you but you could not have waited until i, I got that up I, to see yeah you know, so. i was i was on um I was on the way to work and I saw um, Nadeem, Nadeem Zahawi had um, told him to resign. And I was like, All right, that's it. It's over. You can't like, I mean, we have said that so many times about Boris Johnson. Like, this must be it. This must be it. He's going to resign. He has to resign. That was the moment where I was absolutely certain. And I mean, there's going to be a Tory leadership contest, presuming yeah. there isn't some kind of coronation. Any bets on who it's going to be? No, honestly. <laughs> um, no, I, I don't think I know enough about like the ins and outs of the Tory party. I would like to think, I don't think he can be Rishi Sunak because of the tax evasion stuff, the non-dom status of his wife, the green card for the US, stuff like that. I think it would be risky for the Tories to go for Rishi Sunak. I think, I think it can't be Nadine Zahawi, but it won't stop him going for it because the fact that he propped up Boris Johnson by letting him make him Chancellor, whether or not today he went back against him and said he needs to resign, I still don't think... I just don't think it can be someone that's pro-Boris. For example, Liz Truss, not that, God forbid, but I don't think it could be her anyway. But because she's compromised herself by supporting Boris Johnson... And the same with Rob, but he's already said he's not going to go for it. But I just think anyone who supported him, the Tories would be very, very silly to put them in power. We're some of the there's some wild cards coming through. I mean, Ben Wallace has been tested. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't think that's a wild card. I think it's an 
I think it's an outsider who ends up because he's an outsider, he's actually got a significantly better chance. Like I think he was the bookies' favourite today. Yeah, That's I mean, what you got Paul was putting him ahead. It's interesting. Yeah. Though, you look at it. Six months ago, no one knew who he was because no, just mean, before I, he, he became I, I, I don't really know who Ben Wallace is. Like, but what I will say, there's clearly not a standout candidate because, like you said, the Yuga camp, the Yuga poll put him ahead put him ahead on 13% and 16% said none of the above. So we're, it's not looking great for the stories, but whenever you look across the other side of the box, mm. the batch box, yeah. is there really? It's, the, the thing it, I would say, I, I'm not a massive Labour Party fan right now. I'm not a massive Keir Starmer fan, but I think that no matter what the Tories, no matter what, the line they put out i think with keir starmer you would get a boring centrist government that is overwhelmingly better than the last three years the last 12 years of absolute chaos we've had it's just been awful so whether they can pretend that you would get some hell with keir starmer it would be chaos the chaos of ed Miliband, but um i i really think it wouldn't be that bad i just don't i think it would be uninspiring but maybe someone boring is what we need, just someone sensible. No, whenever, whenever we look at Labour leaders, Ed Miliband had some kind of, I suppose, fiery charisma. Jeremy yeah. Corbyn was Jeremy Corbyn. Tony Blair had his but, own charm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're starting to have that charm? Uh, no, but <laughs> the thing about Keir Starmer, what I will say, I just want to say this before, I don't think Keir Starmer will get fined over the Durham stuff, but if he does, he should resign. And then, so this conversation will be kind of irrelevant. So I'm just saying this on the premise that he will not get fined because I think they seem confident and so they must think he's not going to get fined. That being said, I think Keir Starmer is, he lacks charisma. He lacks like any, like you wouldn't have like Starmerism. Like he's not got his brand, but his brand is boring. But I think that could play into his hands a little bit because there's less to like, play on from a Tory point of view you had Corbyn who was very extreme or well extreme in British politics so it was easy to play into the hands of newspapers like the Mail so it was easy to be anti-Corbyn he re they really managed to kind of rile up a hatred of him I think it would be very hard to do it at Starmer I, I mean I'm not saying they can't I'm sure they could rile up a hatred of anyone but I think Keir Starmer is centrist enough and boring enough that it would be hard to kind of take him apart in that way. And I don't think he would let himself do that. Looking at what's coming next, with the new Tory leader coming in, whoever it may be, yeah. Jacob Rees Mogg a couple of weeks ago said that the event of a leadership contest should result in a general election. Do you think we're going to see one or do you think the Tories I, I think we, we won't see a general election. The only way we see, see a general election, I still, I think this won't happen, is if Boris Johnson was stupid enough to call one to try and save his own skin because no matter what diehard Boris Johnson supporters is, I couldn't like I couldn't believe what I was seeing when I went on Twitter and I saw Boris Johnson kind of like super fans saying he needs to call a general election. Like the people of this country will back him up. They voted for him. No matter what Boris Johnson says, the mandate he got, it's not a presidency. It's a, we, we don't work that way. But even if he got the mandate, I'm sure Boris Johnson won a significant amount of votes more than the Conservative Party would have won if he was not the leader. It's not the case anymore. Latest YouGov polling, 18% of people think he should stay in power. Some people don't know. It was about 68% of people said he should resign. There is not support for Boris Johnson. Any election where Boris Johnson is leader of the Conservative Party will be a catastrophe for the Tory party, and they will hand it for it on a plate to Labour, no matter who the leader is. Like, that's, that's my thoughts on that. But... There should be a general election if they, when they announce the new leader, because otherwise the country hasn't really voted them in. There won't be, because realistically, it would be suicide for the Tories. They, I mean, they might have an outside chance, depending on what happens, but I don't think they'll win. It would be stupid. And I suppose just looking generally, if there is another general election, do you really think that if there is a new Tory leader, the Tory leader, the likes of Tom Tug and Hat, who yeah. kind of, I think the issue they're facing is no one knows who Tom Tug and Hat is. 
you that, know, that would depend on how bears. Do you that think that really, could play really... well for him, or do you think that's a disappointment? I, I think that would play well. I think you, like I said earlier, I think you need someone who was completely uninvolved in this mess. So I really think you need to get someone like Tom Tugendhat, who or Penny Dermon. I don't know how you say her name. Well um, yeah, um, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so stupid. Um, I really think they shouldn't put in someone like Truss, someone like Patel. Whether they're popular or not, it plays into Labour's hands so much, having someone that was a part of this mess. Because you have to remember, Boris Johnson was at fault for a lot of his party's mistakes, but they propped him up for, for the good part of a year. Party gate, I mean, I've got the scandals written down here. Owen Patterson, he should have resigned. Even the wallpaper scandal, that would be enough to bring down most prime ministers. Party gate is crazy. How but he broke the law, he clearly broke the ministerial code, no matter what he says. Either he lied about it, or he is so stupid that he didn't realise he was breaking his own laws. One of them. So you choose. Either way, he shouldn't be prime minister after that. And then this week, I mean, it's crazy because we're, to we're talking about him resigning, obviously. But whilst all this is going on, he makes an admission that he met he met an ex KGB agent's son without his security detail. Like that that's enough to bring down a prime minister on his own. That should still be investigated, even if he's not involved in British politics, because that's a real security risk. And it's crazy that that's just like brushed off now with so many scandals and the Pincher scandal. I just cannot even fathom people defending him after that. It's crazy. Do you think the the Tory parties, I don't want to say finished because they're not no. finished, but I, do you think that in the in the result of a snap general that they are going to be destroyed as much as people sure. are saying? I, I think there is base support for the Tory party. There are a lot of people that would vote in anyone with like a blue rose out on. So I, don't, I think they'll always have that sort of, I would put it about 25% maybe, support like that would just vote for them no matter what i mean even now they're on 31 percent in the polls like that's crazy and fair play to them for having that base of support because labor could not do that i also don't think they're against a particularly strong opposition so that's why i think they will 100 percent lose their majority there's no way that the conservatives could win a majority if there was an election tomorrow or in a few weeks they could bring it back i think I think with a new leader, with solid campaigning for a couple of months, trying to rebrand, put all the Boris stuff behind them, because that's what it's vital they do from their point of view. It's vital they put that behind him, behind them, sorry. And then I think they could be a chance of getting the most seats and forming a coalition government. Looking at the opposition, Nicola Sturgeon announced her intention to call yeah. a referendum. One of the last things yeah, that... That's one of the last things that Boris did as PM, yeah. well, technically in his role as PM backed by the Tory party, yeah. was to reject her calls for a referendum. Yeah. What Do you think she'll just call one anyway? Or uh, I don't know. Do I'm, I don't know enough about Scottish politics to say that. What I will say in relation to the UK politics, though, is if Nicola Sturgeon wants to call a referendum, they're well within their rights to do that. They're well within their rights to leave the UK if they want to. But that will not play well for her or the Labour Party or the Lib Dems, that progressive alliance, that will not play well for them because the SNP is solid in Scotland. They will win seats. But if her kind of election promise is there will be a second referendum, I don't think that will play well because people who may not have cared will vote against her. As in, there is... I mean, it's pretty 50-50, like, what is it, 48, 46 in favour of no. So I think there are a lot of people that wouldn't have voted against her otherwise who will come out and vote for the Tories. I think that will play very well for the Tories in Scotland. Any, I suppose, just before we close out, yeah. any wild card predictions for the next couple of weeks? Can, do you think uh, there will be anything I, at all I, mental comment? I think anything could happen. I think Boris Johnson is like I don't want to say unhinged because I think he's a very like meticulous character I think he knows what he's doing but I think he's also very narcissistic I think he could be very dangerous to the Tory party I think 
but, uh, sorry, Keir Starmer's already said he's going to call a vote of no confidence if he isn't removed. So in that event, he's going. It will be one of the worst ever defeats in Parliament because who would vote for him? And finally, we're seeing a lot of people appointed to Cabinet that we never thought we would oh, ever see at Cabinet before. Are you expecting the call? Um... <sighs> Anything you want in particular? Education, environment, Northern no, Ireland? I, I, I'm not going to lie. I just want, I want, ideally I'd want the Tories out. I, I want the Tories out. I, I will happily say that. I think they've been poisoned to British politics the last 12 years, especially since the, refer- the Brexit referendum. It's just been awful. But I wouldn't mind seeing Tories, in, I would always mind seeing Tories in power, but I don't mind as much if it's a sensible, less right-wing, less populist, less divisive Tory party in power, and so- someone like Rory Stewart, get someone like that, someone middle ground, but other than that, yeah, I've got no outside positions, <laughs> just anything can happen. I mean, think about what's happened in the last 10 days since we were meant to record. It's crazy. Well, I think we'll wrap up there. Yeah. Thank you Thanks very much for coming on. It's been great to talk to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, for all of our listeners, I'm. I hope you've all enjoyed listening. With that, it that's it. We're in season three now. It's mm-hmm. been a wild year and a half to be recording with everyone and to do all of the stuff we're doing. We are very, very much hoping that we could possibly get some kind of event lined up for these boys. Possibly an in-person recording. Possibly a panel event. We're also looking at doing more in-person interviews. If there's anyone you want to see interviewed, if there's any questions you want asked of politicians, you know you can contact us on our socials at Youth Voice NI on Twitter, at Youth Voice underscore NI on Instagram. As always, you can read the blog at www.youthvoiceni.com. I've been Dermot Hamill. You know where you can contact me. If you've any queries at all, if you want to get involved, write, you know, write for us, edit for us, get involved with podcasts. You can always check out our Patreon as well. As always, it's been great to talk. I've been Dermot Hamill. Thank you very much.